This video is sponsored by RenderHub, stick around to find out more details about their brand new contest and also where you can download 3D contents. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So, as the month comes to a close, here's a couple of leftover, banned or even not visible updates within the CG community that you probably missed. And some of these are pretty interesting. And with that said, let's get right into it. The folks at Lightwave Digital have released Lightwave 2024.1 and this introduces several updates. And one of the major updates that is now available with Lightwave 2024.1 includes enhancement to rig it, which is their character rigging system. And this comes with a couple of options and one of the brand new options which got a lot of people talking is the ability to copy and paste animation between characters. You can now add frame range to rig it motion copy. There is also an additional configuration saver for LD instance display. Motion dump and motion scoop has now been added. There's also interesting updates and fixes to the procedural geometry system as the mesh gel node now only shows the first mesh of a layered object. They've also added a duplicate object warning and rename requester when adding multiple procedural geometry objects with the same name. Flow, which is a new simulation tool, now has a beautiful update and improvement to it. And for those that are into modeling, there is an improvement to the edge slide modeling tool. And of course, there are some impressive improvements and beautiful integration with tools like Unreal Engine, Kit Bash libraries, and so on. So generally, Lightwave 2024.1 now comes with a brand new set of tools and fixes that doubles down on the interesting updates of Lightwave 2024, which has definitely changed how Lightwave was perceived previously. Blender 4.2.2 LTS and Blender 3.6.16 LTS updates are now here, and this releases comes with key updates primarily aimed at fixing bugs and improving stability. For Blender 4.2.2 LTS, this release fixed 101 issues from version 4.2.1, which addresses bugs in areas like USD workflows, EV and cycles rendering, and GLTF export. This update is also focused on improving reliability and performance across various workflows. And for Blender 3.6.16 LTS, this, which was the final release within the 3x series, now has updates that addresses four key issues that can be found within the changelog, which includes issues related to Metal API on Mac for crash prevention during viewport rendering and also improvements to grease pencil behavior when appending objects. And like we've mentioned in previous videos, Blender 4.2 will continually be having updates and support from the folks at Blender Foundation from now till July 2026 while Blender 3.6 will continually have updates and fixes from now till June of 2025. And all of this is to provide stability for users working with these versions of Blender. And yes, both versions are super crucial, especially for teams working with them. The folks at Never Center have released Silo 2024.3 and Milo 2024.0, and these are two important updates to their 3D modeling and real-time rendering tools, focusing on performance and improvements with some new features. And for Silo 2024.3, for those who have no idea, this is a pretty interesting tool known for its streamlined, artist-friendly approach to 3D modeling, and the latest release introduces non-destructive modifiers, as this now allows users to apply changes that can be edited at any point in the workflow. And this includes Boolean modifiers, which is a new way of combining and subtracting shapes without permanently altering the base geometry, the chain replicate modifier, which enables users to create repeating objects like chains and simple stairs with more control over spacing and orientation. There's also the path extrusion modifier, which allows artists to extrude objects along a simple path in a non-destructive way, which is pretty useful for creating either simple or complex shapes and surfaces. And this update also brings some user requested features, which include improved zooming controls within the viewport, customizable line width for UVs export, which will more or less enhance precision and flexibility. Overall, Silo 2024.3 brings with it some pretty interesting, simple but yet useful updates, and this update is totally free. And Milo is Neversenter's real-time rendering engine designed as a companion to Silo, and the 2024.0 version has also received updates, and this now offers a better real-time preview for more complex lighting and material setup, making it easy for artists to iterate quickly and see near final renders without leaving the application. Material handling and basic animation support has also been improved. And for those who haven't explored this, probably you're thinking about trying it out, there is a free trial version that you can simply download and start playing with. It's like, wow. The folks at Adobe have actually released a few updates within these past weeks, and first off is Photoshop 2025.12 as this continues the Adobe's path towards generative AI with enhancement to its generative fuel and expand tools. This AI-driven features allows users to add or expand canvas content with natural-looking fields. 
And this is simply driven by Adobe's AI technology. The last time we talked about Adobe stuff, we did mention that Firefly video was coming and it's quite interesting to see how much Firefly has grown over time. And for Adobe Photoshop 25.12, this now brings a brand new set of efficiency and workflow improvements as part of the update that users will be able to work with as this improvement is set to cater to more creative professionals working on a broad spectrum of design and photo projects. And the brand new version of Photoshop also comes with a notification icon and right here is where you get to find important notifications that might deal with update new releases and other things as well Adobe seems to be one of those companies that have leveraged on generative fields and even commercialized it and it is quite interesting to see how this plays out in the future and moving forward, Substance 3D Painter version 10.1 is now here, as this update enhances the painting and texturing tools performance by adding a few new tools. And one of them is the embroidery decal material. This new material allows users to create detailed embroidered patches from images or text which can be applied to 3D models. And this is similar to the embroidery tool which is found in Substance 3D Sampler. And for filters, we now have 8 new filters, which includes the Fill Area Color and Mask filter, FXAA Anti-Aliasing filter, Pixelate, Posterize, Threshold, and Smooth Step filters. There's also updates to USD, as you can now import textures directly and add in Adobe Standard Material Properties when exporting your files out. There's also some general performance improvement, as this update optimizes performance, especially when dealing with complex projects in regards to materials and UVs, as there's now a better support for ID maps that makes painting much more intuitive. And for Substance 3D Modeler, version 1.14 is now available and this introduces performance boosts for handling large scenes, better sculpting tools and there's now a tighter integration with VR sculpting workflow and this version helps modelers to iterate faster by reducing the complexity of managing high poly models and enhancing real-time feedback in both VR and the desktop environment and like we've mentioned in the past, Substance 3D Modeler is a wonderful tool for playing with your digital clay as it does have a desktop version for those who like to use tablets and you can simply flip on a VR headset to have an immersive experience when sculpting. The Godot engine has expanded its accessibility by being made available on Metal Quest Store. So if you do have a Metal Quest, you can now simply dive into the store and download Godot, as this offers VR developers using Godot a more direct pathway to deploy their project onto Meta's VR headset. For me, I kind of think that this would simplify distribution and testing of the VR applications as once you develop them on the VR, you can simply test it. And it's quite interesting to see how much buzz Godot has been getting over time, especially after the whole Unity saga. However, Godot is in hot water right now because there's a little bit of a, a conversational thing going on on Twitter and a lot of people are getting blocked, people are no longer you know, being able to air their own views and that is just a whole different shit show that is happening on Twitter. For those who like to see this, I'm going to link it in the description. There's a whole conversational thing going on, I'll probably make a full video about that one, but that is for those who like to find out more about the whole thing happening with Godot. It is. It, it seems to be crashing now. With with people having a lot of opinions and also Godot blocking developers and also people funding. It's a whole shit show happening there. Moving on, the Godot team have also made some very interesting announcements and they've said a couple of things in terms of progress and priorities for Godot rendering. And this comes with the fact that the developer team is now focused more on enhancing the Vulkan renderer, which brings improvements to real-time global illumination, shadows, and reflection. And of course, these updates by default target both high-end graphics and performance optimization for low-end devices. And this is for continuity and also to balance the needs of wide-range developers. Us. And to be honest, Godot as an engine is pretty cool and we all know that each of the releases that they make brings significant enhancements to their respective tools. All of this just makes this open source tool a very fun and sweet thing to play with. Unity has just announced Speed 3 version 10, and this recent release introduces some powerful features aimed at enhancing vegetation modeling for games, VFX, and animation. And some of these features include the Vine Generator, which allows for realistic physical-based vines that interact with the environment. There's also the Trim Brush, which lets users reshape trees in a natural and freehand way. This release also features a fully redesigned user interface for a smoother user experience, merging the different editions for games and cinema into one unified 
modified workflow. And there are also some very cool improvements in the export system, allowing users to create custom presets and streamlining their workflow across various tools. And one significant update that this comes with is the shade pruning tool, as this optimizes tree models by removing unnecessary internal leaves, improving efficient poly count while maintaining the tree's silhouette. And it is quite interesting to see that Unity has revamped this tool and made it even more appealing. And with all of this, Unity seems to be buying favors back by simply bringing out some very cool tools, improvements and beautiful announcements that developers want to hear. And speaking about Unity, the folks at Humble Bundle has just recently released the Arcade Paradise Game Developer Treasure Chest, and this is a beautiful one for Unity developers. So if you would like to take a look at this, probably you would like to get it, then you can simply go over to the link in the description, come check it out, see what and what you can get. There's also a couple of interesting bundles for Blender artists, some interesting bundles for Unreal artists, and also for Godot artists. So depending on what you like to work with, you can simply come through, check these ones out, and get them. Some audio stuff are also available and we've mentioned a couple of these on the channel previously. For those who like to take a look at all of these and save them right now, links to this is going to be in the description so do well to check them out. And before we go, let's give a huge shout out to the folks at RenderHub. RenderHub is currently doing the third iteration of the RenderHub Horrific Render Contest and this is running from the 1st of September all the way to the 31st of October 2024 with prizes to be won to worth about $2,650. And for those who like to join this contest, right now you can as there's gonna be a link in the description that will be right here where you'll be able to join the contest. The submission date starts from 1st of September and the deadline for final submission will be October the 31st of 2024 with winners to be announced on November the 14th of 2024 and this comes with some terms and conditions, eligibility and deliverables. And one thing to keep in mind is generative AI of any kind is not allowed and this is super cool. More so, if you like to find where you can download 3D content then RenderHub is the home for you as RenderHub offers free 3D content that you can download and additionally they do have art galleries that offers a ton of inspiration that you can pick from. And of course if you like to download anything of RenderHub you can simply go over to the marketplace and you can choose to download 3D asset, textures, materials, brushes, HDRIs, sound effects and so on. So if you've been looking for a place where you can find all of this cool stuff and you would like to also join this contest then RenderHub is the place for you. So this is it, tell us what you think about this one in the comment section and of course a huge shout out to the folks at RenderHub for making this possible and until I see you guys in the next one, peace.